Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We're going to show you some easy ways of thinking about parametric equations of lines in 3D space. If you remember the most common ways of writing the equation for a line in 2D space, we are probably pretty well acquainted with y equals mx plus b, the slope-intercept form. This equation is sometimes achieved by rearranging the standard form of a linear equation by just solving for y. These are really just the same equation rearranged in different forms. There's another way that we can represent a line in 2D space using separate equations for the x and y coordinates. This is used commonly when talking about a line as a trajectory, especially when we want to talk about traveling the line in a certain direction or orientation. The set of equations that represent a line are actually called parametric equations. The reason for this, you can see, is that both the x and y coordinates are defined using some formula that depends on another parameter. Here it's t, which we usually assume represents time. So in 3D space, we also use these to represent linear trajectories, obviously with an additional z component. This is what our parametric equations will look like in R3 here. You can see each equation has a constant term and a linear t term. An easy way to read and write these parametric equations is to first notice all of the constant terms together in your set of equations. Together these all represent some point in space that the line goes through. Now a line through one point could be going in any direction, so knowing one point is not enough to define a line in space. We also need to know which direction it's traveling through that point. Looking at the linear t terms all together in our set of equations, these coefficients tell us a vector that points in the same direction as the line in 3D space. Let's start with some basic examples and we'll work up the difficulty a little bit as we go. So we want to find parametric equations for the line through point P, which is 2, 1, 4, and Q, which is 5, 2, 0. So if I just pick one of my points here, let's say this point P, and I call this x0, y0, and z0, or x0, y0, z0. Okay, so if I think about writing my parametric equations, I'm going to have x as a function of t, y as a function of t, and z as a function of t. So according to what we told you before, this x0, y0, z0, these are actually going to be the constants in each equation. So 2, 1, and 4 going down just like that. x0 in the x equation, y0 in the y equation, z0 in the z equation. And then what we'll also need is a vector that points in the direction of this line. Now we don't have that vector, but we can find the vector from p to q. That's not too difficult to do, so let's go ahead and figure that out over here. So the vector p, q, right, would be the vector that goes from p to q. We could figure that out using q minus p. So that vector that comes from subtracting, we get 5 minus 2 would give us 3 for the x component, 2 minus 1 would give us 1 for the y component, and 0 minus 4 would give us negative 4 for the z component. So this is our vector that points in the direction of the line, and these simply give us the coefficients for our t terms. So since this is in the x position, 3 is the coefficient for our t term in the x equation. Since 1 is the y component in the vector, then 1, we'll just have 1t in the y equation. Negative 4 is the z component in the vector, so we will have negative 4t as our linear term in the z equation. So we get these three equations, these are our parametric equations, and this is a line in space that goes through both the point P and Q. You'll notice our points 2, 1, 4 here, 2, 1, 4, that's actually going to occur when these values are all 0. Think about if we plug in 0 for t, each of these t terms is going to go away, and we'll just be left with x equals 2, y equals 1, and z equals 4. So we can see when we plug in t equals 0, we get this point x0, y0, z0 here, just based on how we built the equations. So that means p is actually on the line at t equals 0 on this trajectory. We could do a similar thing maybe and figure out what time value are we when we're at point q at the point 5 to 0. Say t equals something there. 
right? Well, we could figure it out by, I think, just taking these equations and setting them equal to these values and seeing what we get, right? So let's, let's just do that with the first one. If we take 2 plus 3t, and we want to know what value of t puts us at the point q, well, the x-coordinate at q is 5, so this 2 plus 3t must equal 5, right? And this 1 plus t, the y-coordinate, must be equal to 2, and 4 minus 4t must be equal to 0. Well, you can solve any of these for t, and I think that you get t is 1 in all of these. So this is the point where t is equal to 1. And so you also sort of get this idea of orientation. If you're thinking about traveling forward in time, which is what we usually do when we talk about a trajectory. So if we were here at time equals 0 and here at time equals 1, I think you can see that we're actually moving this direction forward in time and increasing value along the line. So you can think about these points as we pass t equals 1 and move further and further. These are larger positive values for t. If we wanted to consider negative values for t, and sometimes we don't, but if we wanted to, then that means these points over here are actually negative values of t. As we move farther and farther away from p, we just get larger negative values. So now let's use that idea of those t values and solve this one. If we want to find parametric equations for the line segment, so a piece of the line, from 214 to 520. Notice same point P and Q here, we're just not taking the whole line. So remember before, this was at time equal to 0. This was at time equal to 1 we just found. And we already know generally how to set up these equations, right, for x and y and z in terms of our parameter t. We can take this value 2 and the value 1 and the value 4. That's our x naught, y naught, z naught from before. We found the vector, right, going from 1 to the next. This was 2 plus 3t. This was 1 plus t in the last example. This is 4 minus 4t from before. So this gives us the line through p and q, but we only want the values between 0 and 1, including those values. So what we need to do is also specify a domain for the parameter. In other words, we need to say that t, time, is only allowed to be considered between the values 0 and 1. And so that will indicate a line segment. So limiting the t values to some interval tells us that we're talking about a piece of the line, a line segment, rather than allowing t to be any real number where we're then talking about the entire line. So let's work another one of these and we'll see what the pattern is. We want to find parametric equations for the line segment again, so just a piece of the line, from a new point p, which is 3, negative 2, 1, to a new point q, which is negative 4, negative 2, 6. And we're indicating make sure that we specify a domain for our parameter here. Well, we know first that this is our x naught, y naught, and z naught, and this is some other point, right? Some other t value. So if we think about x of t and y of t, these functions of t, our parameter, we can write down our initial point here, 3, negative 2, 1, as our constants in these equations. And now as long as we can find a vector that points in the direction of this line, this line segment, then we'll have the coefficients for our t terms. So we just simply need to figure out what is vector pq again. So remember, vector pq starts at p, goes to q, like it says here. So it's q minus p. We'll do negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Negative 2 minus negative 2 is actually 0. And 6 minus 1 would give us 5. So now we go ahead and use these for our coefficients for our t terms. So we will have 3 minus 7t. In the next one we would have negative 2 plus 0t, but we don't really need to write 0t, so we'll leave that off. And then we have a 1 plus 5t based on that 5 there. You can see again if you just look at the constants here that we got from x0, y0, z0, this is certainly going to be where we are on the line when t is equal to 0, the way that we're doing this here, right? So p is when time is equal to 0. Can you see the way we've done this with the vector now? When would we arrive at negative 4, negative 2, 6? And the answer is, if you sort of think about solving 3 minus 7t is equal to negative 4, and you could solve 1 plus 5t is equal to 6, 
you can see again based on just using this vector in its true form we're really getting t equals 1 again so this is t is equal to 1. So the way we're teaching you to do this is really the simplest way to do that and that's to just assume that the path is going to take you one second and if you need to adjust that otherwise you always can but this easy way to build this is always going to assume that t is between 0 and 1. So these are our parametric equations with parameter domain assuming t is between 0 and 1 makes this all work out nicely. So let's do one more here. So this is going to be our t equals 0. This will be our x naught, y naught, and z naught. Well this will be our t equals 1 over here. So we have the new points negative 7, 4, 0 for p and negative 1, 1, 2 for q we can go ahead and start writing our constant expressions in the front of each. So x of t, y of t, z of t. x of t is going to start with negative 7 because of x naught. y of t is going to start with 4 because of y naught. And z of t is going to start with 0. We could write that in, I guess, for now. We'll clean that up later. And now we need our vector, right? So what is our vector pq? That will tell us the coefficients for t in each of these. So negative 1 minus negative 7 would be like plus 7, so that'll give us 6. 1 minus 4 will get negative 3. And then 2 minus 0 will get 2. So that's our vector that is in the direction of this line, line segment in this case. So 6 is our coefficient for t in the x equation. Negative 3 is our coefficient for t in the y equation. And 2 is the coefficient for t in the z equation. Obviously we can clean this z up a bit and again this is assuming that t goes from 0 to 1. We'll go ahead and just remove our 0 plus 2t and we'll just call it 2t or z and we need to specify that t is from 0 to 1 here. Okay, so let's look at one where it takes us not just one second. It takes some other amount of time to get from P to Q. So we want to find parametric equations for the trajectory that goes from P to Q that takes three seconds. So we're going to start at P, we're going to end at Q, and we want it to take three seconds. So in other words, we want this to be at T equals zero, let's say, and this to be at T equals three. We can still use our X naught, Y naught, Z naught, idea here. So we can still think of x and y and z all starting with those constants. So x of t is still going to start negative 7, y of t is still going to start with 4, and z is still going to start with 0. We'll probably take that off at the end. And there are a couple of ways to do this. You can sort of write out the vector that you had before and sort of adjust it by a multiple. That's one way to do it. Let's just think about another way to do this, right? So let's say we don't know the coefficients for t. Let's call them like a, b, and c, for example, okay? Now why might we do that, right? Well the idea is we want to get to negative 1, 1, 2 when t is equal to 3. So here we could plug in 3 for t, which is what we want, and then figure out what these a, b, and c coefficients are. So let's go ahead and do that. So in other words, negative 7 plus a times 3 should equal this negative 1, the x coordinate, right? And for the y, 4 plus bt, so 4 plus b times 3 should equal positive 1. And here 0 plus ct, so in other words just c times 3 is going to equal the z coordinate here, 2. So can we figure this out? Let's see. So this is going to be 3a. If I add the 7 over to the other side, that's going to be 6 here. I think that tells us that a is 2. And then we have 3b. If I subtract 4 over to the other side, that would be equal to negative 3. I think if we divide by 3, that's going to tell us b is negative 1 here. And then if we have 3c, if we divide both sides by 3, that's just going to tell us straight away that c is equal to two-thirds, right? Okay, so we have our a, b, and c, so let's go ahead and write this down. So in this case, our x of t is going to be negative 7, a was 2, so it would be plus 2t. y of t equals 4 
plus bt, so b is negative 1, so that would be minus t, z is equal to just ct, and c was 2 thirds, so 2 thirds t. And we know our time domain, our domain for t, our parameter t, should be from 0 to 3. Let's take a look at this versus this was the same trajectory. In the last example, it took us one second. In this example, it's taking us three seconds. So let's sort of notice the difference here. We know, of course, our negative 7, our 4, and our 0 are all going to be the same. But in the last one, you'll notice we had 6, negative 3, and 2. And over here, now that we're changing t to be up to three seconds, we now have the values 2, negative 1, and 2 thirds. So what you might notice here is actually our constant term stayed the same, but actually our coefficients were all divided by 3, right? In other words, we want to travel this trajectory one-third as fast so that we get there in 3 seconds instead of 1 second. And so if you sort of get that pattern down, that's another way of looking at adjusting a multiple of your coefficients for t. All right, hopefully this introduction helps you to work out your parametric equations for lines in 3D space, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.